A skin star who wouldn't show skin, a flasher who decided to stop bearing it all, and two men who let the power of Christ compel them. The career of these actors were never the same after they refused to do nude scenes. Neil McDonough is known for his work in series like HBO's Band of Brothers and the short-lived Boomtown, but part of the reason he isn't really a household name is because of his refusal to do certain scenes. Because of his Catholic faith and his commitment to his marriage, he refuses to even kiss another woman on camera. For our relationship, our relationship is always paramount to, to, to me in, in, in my life. This is the most important thing in my world is, is what I'm holding. Because of this, the Desperate Housewives writers had to get creative about when he was cast in the fifth season, but not everyone was so forgiving. McDonough was fired from the ABC series Scoundrels because of his refusal to do sex scenes. As he told Fox News in 2022, there was a time when I wasn't working. I couldn't get a job because people thought I was this crazy religious guy, but that wasn't the case. I love my wife, but I love my acting too. I was hopeful that at some point someone would give me a chance again. Eventually someone did, as he landed the role of Robert Quarles on Justified. Although he rarely plays the leading man, McDonough is known as one of the best TV villain actors out there. Having appeared in numerous productions in her career, Raiden Greer was no stranger to the camera, but she had her limits. Having been cast as an exotic dancer in the very first season of True Detective, Greer told director Kerry Joji Fukunaga that she wouldn't go topless for a scene. According to Greer, Fukunaga tried to pressure her into it even after nudity had been taken off the table in prior discussions, and it ultimately resulted in her being fired. As Greer told The Brag in 2021, Kerry said to me at that moment, everybody on this show goes topless. All the women on the show go topless. Your character is a stripper, so you have to. It was just on and on and on with no budgie. I was pretty hysterical. I felt like I was being backed into a corner that nobody was listening to me. Greer's role was ultimately taken over by a background actor on set and she was abruptly removed from the production. As a result, Greer hasn't done much in the interim, only appearing in a handful of projects since 2015. As her breakout gig, April Pearson learned a lot about the film industry from her time on the British teen drama Skins and the projects that followed. In 2021, the actress took to social media to explain that she was set to star in an unnamed feature before being fired and replaced after refusing to go back on her nudity clause and go topless. It's a funny one because I, to this day, think did I do the right thing? Would my career be better off now? As it stands, most of Pearson's filmography consists of short films, one-off TV appearances, and horror-based independent projects. She hasn't been in anything as successful as Skins since. As she concluded at the end of her video, I think that's a real problem that we have in the industry. That scene was more about a female body than it was about a female character. Rachel Bilson's big screen debut came in the 2006 rom-com drama The Last Kiss, a film that earned her a Teen Choice Award nomination for 2007's Breakout Female but Bilson was almost kicked off the movie. According to the actress, she was nearly fired for refusing to do a nude scene, one that she didn't think needed to be in the movie at all, telling Playboy in 2008, movies can be sexy or sexual without showing things. It's almost a deal breaker. The movie was rated R and they like to put in nudity whenever they can, but I'm pretty strong-willed and believe it can be avoided. As it turns out, she was right. Unfortunately, however, despite the success of The Last Kiss and her work in television, Bilson's movie career never quite took off. When Jim Caviezel took on the role of Jesus Christ and the Mel Gibson directed The Passion of the Christ, it completely redefined his career. The Catholic actor took his faith incredibly seriously in the years following. But aside from his outspoken religious and political views, there's another reason why you don't see Caviezel too often on screen anymore. As the actor told People in 2002, just two years before playing Christ, I have a hard time getting naked on film. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's right. In my faith, I'm taught that abstinence is important. When shooting love scenes for movies like Angel Eyes with Jennifer Lopez and The Count of Monte Cristo, Caviezel Diesel reportedly took precautions such as keeping his pants on and placing an object physically between him and his acting partner to honor and respect his marriage. While there are clearly other factors as to why Caviezel's career looks different than it maybe could have, the Sound of Freedom star's stance on nudity and sex scenes has in part shaped his career, though he's likely not complaining. In the early 2000s, Mandy Moore was a staple of the romantic and family-friendly genre, appearing in over a dozen films between 2002 and 2007, along with TV appearances and her music career. But for Moore, less wasn't always more, even if going topless may have pushed her career even further. As she told USA Today in 2007, I turned down several roles where the producers or directors or writers wouldn't budge on that point. I'm not saying that it's wrong for someone else to do them, but I think there's a way to be feminine and sexy without posing half-naked. For Moore, it would have been impossible for her to divorce her on-screen work from her interactions with the average person on the street, and that was more than enough of a deterrent to exposing herself on camera. Having been the official voice of the Disney princess Rapunzel since 2010, it's safe to say that Moore's career wasn't completely demolished as a result. Her stance may have kept her from certain roles that could have catapulted her career further, but she doesn't seem too bothered by that now. 
Molly Ringwald was a teen icon in the 1980s, which eventually allowed her to partake in more mature roles. This led to films like Malicious, where she went topless for the first and only time, but it turns out there were plenty of sexually suggestive and nude scenes she turned down over the years, including a potential fourth collaboration between her and John Hughes. When she spoke up and asked the filmmaker to rework his story, he refused. Ringwald told Yahoo Entertainment in 2018, ultimately the film was never made, though there could have been other circumstances I was not aware of. Ringwald also revealed in the interview that she convinced the director to ditch a nude scene he'd written for The Breakfast Club, which didn't even involve her character. But that unrealized project wasn't the only production that Ringwald was uncomfortable taking on. She also opted against doing Pretty Woman for similar reasons, praising Julia Roberts for her performance, but admitting that she wasn't a fan of the story. It's unclear how different Ringwald's career might have looked if she had tackled some of these projects, but there's no denying that Ringwald will forever be associated with her iconic teen roles. Along with Molly Ringwald, Michelle Pfeiffer was another leading lady who was up for the part of Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman. Today, we know Pfeiffer best for her work in Hairspray, One Fine Day, and superhero movies such as Batman Returns and Ant-Man and the Wasp. But before all of that, despite having gone nude in a handful of movies before, Pfeiffer wasn't interested in Pretty Woman, nor did she want to do Basic Instinct, a film with a particularly revealing moment for Sharon Stone, who ultimately took the part. As Pfeiffer explained in 2007, I just couldn't do Basic Instinct because of the sexual parts, the nudity. My father was still alive. I'm kind of prudish, and honestly, I'm not that uninhibited about my body. I'm modest." Pfeiffer later explained that there could also have been many other reasons why she turned some of these roles down, reflecting years later on the Today Show. It's not necessarily because you don't want to do it. There's a conflict. You're committed to something else. Typically, it was something like that. There's no denying that Pfeiffer has been relatively picky with the roles she chooses. Not all of that is likely due to her refusal to do nude scenes over the past few decades, but also because of her desire to focus on her family as well. The film Monsters Ball won Halle Berry an Oscar for Best Actress, and alongside X-Men and Swordfish really jump-started her career. But it was originally Angela Bassett that was sought out for the role. It turns out that Bassett, who hadn't starred in a major movie role in a number of years, turned down the part for one reason – character. As she told Newsweek in 2002, I wasn't going to be a prostitute on film. I couldn't do that because it's such a stereotype about black women and sexuality. Bassett didn't go so far as to criticize Berry for tackling the role, but she did note that Meryl Streep won plenty of Academy Awards without sexually exploiting herself on camera. It may have taken her an extra decade or two, but nowadays Bassett is doing just fine and is well known for her roles as Athena on 911 and Queen Ramonda of Wakanda on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Having played the latter on a number of occasions, starting with 2018's Black Panther and most recently in the 2022 sequel Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Bassett has proven that the long way around is sometimes the one with the best results. Drew Barrymore didn't always refuse nude scenes in movies, and she once even flashed David Letterman on live TV. But there came a point where she was no longer interested in unclothed work of any kind. According to Barrymore, after she posed nude for Playboy, none other than Steven Spielberg himself told her to cover up, a message she took to heart. So when the script came for Showgirls, Barrymore had to turn it down. And given how controversial that one turned out, it may have been for the best. Barrymore wasn't the only actor who passed on Showgirls, but she was among the most notable. Following her decision to reinvent herself, the late 90s era comedies like The Wedding Singer, Never Been Kissed, and the period drama Ever After all became successful films for Barrymore. Soon, the actress had successfully rebranded herself as a rom-com icon. None of this would have likely been possible had she not turned down the suggestive Showgirls. Even after engaging in some pretty risque material prior, Barrymore wasn't going to let her past limit her, and told ABC News years later that she hoped her daughter would make different choices than she did. My life choices are not supposed to be the gateway to somebody else's. That's my journey. It may be hard to believe, but Tombstone actress Dana Delaney could have been the lead in Sex and the City. Delaney, who isn't known to play the same sorts of roles more than once, was asked by creator Darren Starr to consider playing Carrie, but she refused, explaining to the Los Angeles Times in 2008, I had done a movie called Live Nude Girls with Kim Cattrall that was somewhat similar. It was women sitting around talking about sex. I just said to Darren, I cannot do a show with sex in the title. People will lynch me if I do one more thing about sex. It's worth noting that Delaney went completely nude in previous projects, which likely contributed to her passing on Sex and the City. Sure, Delaney could have had a much bigger career, but given that the actress loves to play new and exciting characters, distancing herself from being typecast may have been the right move. 